welcome to this week's preview show coming from the AFC Bournemouth training ground. Neil Perrett joins me as we look ahead to another big weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 1-0 win over Manchester United last weekend. We'll also be joined by Steve Cook who talks us through the season so far. And finally we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Newcastle. But first, we're going to start back at last weekend and that fantastic 1-0 win over Manchester United. Let's remind ourselves of the winning goal. Now, Smith's gone on as the decoy. Harry Wilson, top of the box. Now Fraser, right of the D. Back to Adam Smith. Patient stuff. The ball comes in. King takes it down. Can he set for the shot? Joshua King! Yes! Absolutely brilliant! A chest, a turn and a fire! And what a way to end Bournemouth's goal droughts on the stroke of half-time against Manchester United. Their former player, Joshua King, Bournemouth 1, United 0. Well, you have to say we deserve that for the last 10, 15 minutes or so. We had some good possession, got in wide positions, and then a great goal by Kingy. The composure to take it on his chest and swivel and hit it into the ground. Fantastic strike, 1-0 off. Well, the build-up had such a degree of patience around it. There were two or three intricate balls. Smith, Harry Wilson, Fraser, all deserve some credit for their part in the build-up. Well, what a goal, what a win. Neil, it was certainly a memorable one, wasn't it? It's, it doesn't happen very often when you beat teams like Manchester United. I know that we beat them in our first season in the Premier League. And, you know, you, you can say what you like about how Manchester United have fared this season. They are Manchester United. They, they've won the title 20 times more than anyone else. Um, and, you know, I know that we're all equals in the Premier League, but it's a fantastic scalp. It's a memorable win. Um, and, you know, it was thoroughly deserved on the day as well. And Joshua King, it was a brilliant finish, wasn't it? And, and perfect timing just before just before the break. It's always good to score on the stroke of half-time, especially when it opens the scoring. Um, and what a fantastically taken goal. I mean, he had so much to do when he received the ball with his back to goal, uh, turned his man and, you know, finished resoundingly. It was a, it was a fantastic goal. Coming against his former club, obviously, it's going to be a little bit extra special for him. You could see the admiration between him and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, at the end of the game, which was nice to see. Um, and uh, a fantastic goal, a fantastic day uh, and a memorable day for, for, for the club. And at one end of the pitch, we had Joshua King scoring that goal. At the other end of the pitch, Steve Cook and Nathan Ake, how many times have we said it this season? They were brilliant, weren't they? Well, um, certainly developing into one of the best central defensive partnerships in the uh, in the Premier League um, you know when you look at the, the there was a, I think it was 131 million and 170,000 worth of central defensive talent on the pitch that day and I think Steve only cost about 170,000 of that I mean it just that just says it all for me really it, it's just remarkable you know his rise and you know the way that he's bonded so well with Nathan Aki um, and it, it, what you know highlights it is the fact that you know Tyrone Mings who's in the England squad couldn't displace either of those two here so I think that speaks volumes about how well they've done and what a fantastic partnership that they forged and a third clean sheet in a row all of a sudden waiting for that first clean sheet you get three in a row well I like like the proverbial buses one isn't it you know don't see one for ages and then two or three come along at the same time and you know, um, there haven't been, there weren't too many scares against, certainly against Manchester United. Um, I think it's probably the longest we've gone now without conceding a goal in the Premier League. I think the last time we kept four clean sheets was in the Championship. So, um, you know, that's going to certainly be something to go for against Newcastle, which won't, cert won't, won't be an easy place to get one. But uh, it just shows, you know, we haven't had any so far and then all of a sudden to get three on the trot. It just shows you how well the, the defence are coming together now. And a word on Jefferson Lerma. He picked up that yellow card. He was going to get it at some point. He'll be out of the Newcastle game. But he picked it up quite early on and, and you know, did well for the rest of the game to, to play out on a, on, on a yellow card. Well, I think, again, you know, um, yes, Jefferson Lerma has been booked a lot of times, more than anyone else in the Premier League, I think. But let's not forget, he's not been sent off, which, you know, that's some feat for someone who plays the way he does. He's a very combative, tough tackling midfield player. Um, one or two of the bookings, you know, he's obviously going to be disappointed with, you know, reacting to this, that and the other. But it happens. It's all in the heat of the moment. But... Yeah, um, he's. He, it will be something that he's looking to curb. I'm sure the manager will be, you know, talking to him about it. But you don't want to take 
certain things out of his game. You know, um, you know, he'll be making crucial goal-saving tackles and he might pick up a yellow card. Well, I'd rather he picked up a yellow card than the opposition got a goal. Absolutely. And, and just finally on, on this section, 16 points, that win against Manchester United taking us onto that, that tally. It's a great place to be in, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, everybody talks about how last season was, you know, the club's best start in the Premier League season. Well, while we haven't eclipsed that, we're certainly not very far behind. And, you know, let's not forget that uh, at this stage of this season, we've got twice as many points as we had in our first season in the Premier League. So that tells you how well we've done. Um, you know, and I was sort of thinking about it the other day, you know, if we'd have beaten Sheffield United, Watford and Norwich, you know, uh, it's all ifs and buts, I know. You can get carried away so easily, of, can't of you? Of course you can, but, you know, you look at the three games, you could have won them, we could have won them. So, um, but, you know, uh, here we are, 11 games in, 16 points, it's, you know, it's a good haul. Absolutely. Well, next up in the Premier League is the trip to Newcastle. And a couple of years ago, it was quite the day on the team. Okay, on the move in the middle again, it'll go over him, it's headed in though, behind him, Steve Cook came in to head it in. Bournemouth have nicked it in the second minute of injury time. Newcastle in a bit of disarray at the back, nobody else needed to touch it. It's Cook who watches it and times his jump to perfection over the top of two defenders to put the ball past Rob Elliott. Look at Cook's movement. Well, what a fantastic last minute goal at St James's Park a couple of years ago. Now then, as you can see on this week's show, we have been joined by Steve Cook. Cookie, thank you for joining us. We're going to start back at last weekend, 150 Premier League appearances. How's that been for you? Yeah, it's nice. Um, obviously, um, it's gone quite quick. Fifth season in the Premier League now, and um, it was a good, good game to, to mark it, and, and hopefully many more to come. And for you, what, what's been the highlight of those 150 games? You know, we've seen that goal against Newcastle and we had that one against West Ham last year. There's been some real highs, haven't there? Yeah, there has. Um, I think the best game that I've, I've been involved in is the Liverpool game here. Obviously scored as well, which was nice. But yeah, I don't think we've had anything quite like it, um, especially against such a good team. So yeah, Liverpool game was amazing. And more recently, three clean sheets in a row. That must be so rewarding for you and, and the defence and Aaron Ramsdale behind you in goal. Yeah, I was delighted for, for Ramos because it took quite a while to get that clean sheet. Um, he'd been playing so well and, and obviously now we're we're chasing our fourth consecutive one. So um, it's nice for the team, obviously extra special for the defenders and goalkeeper. Um, and now we want more. And obviously, obviously as you said, it, it took a while to come. Is there anything that you put that down to, you know, three weeks ago, keep it a first clean sheet and then haven't conceded a goal since? Yeah, we've we've done a lot of tight uh, overloads defending, um, obviously training, um, and it definitely it definitely helps out. You do find yourself sometimes, especially in this league, overloaded uh, around your box. So if you're used to doing it in training, then it's, it makes it a little bit easier uh, in the game. And Nathan Acker, you've been playing him, with him for quite a few years now. What's he like to, to play with alongside? Yeah, he makes the game uh, seem easy uh, for himself. He, he's so consistent. Um, he's very athletic and, and, and terrific on the ball. So he's a full package. Um, I really enjoy playing with him, um, playing alongside him. Um, so hopefully he can keep producing the performances um, and it definitely helps uh, me as well. And just in general, when you look at the start of the season, from a personal point of view, are you pleased with how it's gone? Is it where you expected the side to be? Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, last year we had such a good start. Uh, I don't think we're far off that. Um, we want to build. Um, we're coming into a, a busy busy spell now. Christmas time is, is so important in this league and in, in English football. So um, hopefully we can stay positive, stay on this run. Um, and really pick up a lot of points. And I just want to ask you a question about fantasy football. We had a little chat about it a minute ago. How's the season going for you uh, from that point of view? Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointing right now. Um, I, was, I was top, but I failed to make um, a few a few transfers and found myself dropped down the league quite quite miserably. So, 
yeah, really, a real big shame. Do you so, pick yourself? No, I actually dropped myself. Oh, dropped no, yourself yeah. after the clean sheets no, as well? No, I had no clean sheets oh, at okay. this point. I came out and now I've got three, so maybe um, I'll keep myself out probably, yeah. Do you have any, other lad, any of the other lads in the Diego. team? Diego. Yeah, so he's flying the flag and Callum at the moment, but he's got to be careful. Got to be careful. And then going ahead, looking to, to this weekend against Newcastle, as we've just seen fond memories for, for you personally there. Yeah, um, at that time when I came in and, and scored, I, I, I'd been out of the team, so it was extra special personally. Um, and it was a big win for us at the time. So I think it was a similar sort of time of the year as well. So hopefully we can go and replicate that and um, and start climbing. I think we can go up to fifth um, this week. So. Uh, that'd be that'd be brilliant going into the international break. And it would be great to get something for the fans up at Newcastle. It's such a long way to go, the longest trip of the season, and they'll be there in their numbers as they are every year. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, extremely long journey. Um, extremely high up in the in, in the stadium as well. So um, it's a great place to go and play. Um, I think the, the supporters enjoy the weekend up there, and hopefully we can give something to them to, to cheer about. Well, Cookie, thank you for joining us. I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the supporters and wishing you and the team the best of luck for the weekend. Thanks, so. Now then, we turn our attention to that game against Newcastle. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. Listen, the last week was great and we were, we were really pleased with the performance and really pleased with a lot of aspects of our play. But I think the most important thing for us now is to try and push on from, from that performance and try and hit that level or get close to that level every week. For us, I'll just be saying to our, our team um, out of possession to continue their good work, um, to have the same mentality that we've shown in recent weeks. Because um, I've been really pleased with that side of our game. I think it's we've had a, a steeliness in the last few games that's uh, made a big difference and um, we want that to become part of our DNA. And Steve Cook is, is performing really well for the team and has really played his part in that defensive steal that I talked about. So um, for him, it's just be consistent, keep um, producing the performances. Against West Ham last week, they were excellent. They could have they could have scored more, and that's away from home at West Ham, which you know how tough that game is. Uh, they counter-attacked really well, a lot of pace in their front line. So, yeah, we, I think we know it's going to be a really tough test. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. And the press conference room is where we have had to come because it has just started chucking it down with rain outside. Neil, it's probably preparing us for the weekend, isn't it? An away trip to Newcastle, it's, it's going to be a cold one up there. Oh, it's pretty cold always in the northeast, even in, even in the middle of summer, I think. So what it's going to be like in November, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, I mean, um, got caught in the rain there, but here we are, nice and dry here now. And of course, you know, Newcastle on the weekend, they've had a great win against West Ham last week and even though they are 15th you know we've seen them beat Manchester United just like we did here last week and, and they'll be confident going into the game. Yeah I mean they got beaten 5-0 by um, Leicester about um, four or five games ago and I think everybody sort of thought you know this this could it's going to sort of written them off a few people had but they bounced back in style like you said um, four games they've won two of them and drawn one of them they beat Manchester United and winning away at West Ham so um, I think Steve Bruce publicly came out and criticised his players, which is a brave move by a manager, but it certainly had the, uh, the desired effect. And in terms of Newcastle's individuals, we've had Sean Longstaff, Matt Longstaff in the press very recently, you know, for that win over Manchester United. But they've got players dotted all over the pitch, don't they, that, that could be a threat? Well, certainly. I mean, I'm looking into their central defensive options. They've got um, they've only conceded three goals at St James's Park, which is um, the fewest in the Premier League, along with Leicester. Um, and one of the reasons for that, I think, has been the central defensive pairing have been really, really strong this season. And they've got one or two options there. So uh, that's obviously kept the lads who are playing on their toes. Um, and Alan to Maximam, the lad, the uh, player they signed from um, Nice in the summer, he's certainly been turning it on in the in the past few weeks. So he's certainly a, a very dangerous customer. And, you know, Steve Cook's just said the importance of getting a good result going into an international break two weeks without a game. And, you know, having gone to Leicester and, and lost, gone to Arsenal and lost before the last two international breaks, it would be brilliant if they could get a result and, you know, they'd have a, a positive two weeks. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody likes to uh, to go into the international break on the, on the back of a win. Um, I I, uh, I know that we've got quite a good record of uh, games before the international break where we, we have won. Um, everybody's more buoyant, obviously, for the two-week break, you know, and uh, you have to wait so long to for the next game as well. So um, there's no reason why we can't build on the Manchester United win and, you know, repeat it at St James's Park. And, you know, we've said before, three clean sheets in a row. Newcastle are going to be tough to break down. You know, they've, they've only conceded three goals at home themselves. So it, it could be a game of few chances. 
Yeah, um, we, as you said, we've consi- we've um, kept three clean sheets on the trot. It's um, minutes wise, it's the best we've ever done in the Premier League as well. Um, four clean sheets. The last time we did that was when we were in the Championship. So there's certainly going to be something for the players to aim for there. Um, you know, whilst they've not conceded very many goals, you know, we haven't conceded any goals in the past three games. So um, it could be a game of few chances, but um, I think it could be an entertaining game as well. And just in terms of our team news, Jefferson Lerma we know isn't going to play and it opens the door for perhaps either Dan Gosling or Lewis Cook to, to come in. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously the manager's just um, spoken about his midfield options. It remains to be seen who plays, um, but whoever plays, um, no doubt give a good account of themselves. We've seen what Lewis Cook can do. We know what Dan Gosling can do. He's up against one of his former clubs as well, of course, so that'll be uh, added incentive for him. So let's wait and see what he does. Um, but we've looked really strong in that midfield department and either of those two players would certainly not weaken it in any way. And just finally, I do it with Chris every week, what's your score prediction? Uh, It's going to be a 1-0 away win with a 94th minute winner from Steve Cook, a header. That sounds like a couple of years ago, Neil. (laughs) Well, if you are over 18 and you want to have a go at predicting the score, just head over to cherrieschampions.com. Jeremy from Paul was the winner of a signed shirt last week and this week he could win a signed AFC Bournemouth football. That's all we've got time for today. If you are going to Newcastle, have a safe trip. But if not, make sure you keep an eye on all of our social media channels for the latest updates. Bye for now.